So, um, this is only our second time, time number two for us both on camera. Number two can mean a lot of things. True that, we'll just say it's the good stuff. It is the good stuff. Uh, this is Eva 2016, I am Jaime Rivera. I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. This is Pocket Now, let's wrap it up. All of Pocket Now's EVA 2016 coverage is brought to you by XCOM Global. So to begin, disclaimer, this is actually our first EVA, number one. Both number of us. two, both of us. This is our first trade show covering the show floor together. That's and true, that's it true. was an awesome experience. Juan, you're an awesome guy. I, it, it was excellent getting to tag team this with you because I've covered these kinds of events by myself and this is a lot more fun. But then again, this trade show... Oh, it's big. Well, I mean, it is. It's one of the world's largest consumer electronic shows, but it's also in a really large and spread out venue. And then there are so many amazing little sightseeing opportunities around Berlin that the companies that were out there showing their products, you know, we had a lot of commute time in between these different setups. Oh my God. Just the challenges of trying to get this video footage up to you guys up on the YouTubes. That was definitely something that uh, I personally wasn't completely prepared for. No, it was challenging. Too much uh, commuting, too much. <laughs> Even there are, sh just to give you an idea, there are shuttles within the mess up just for you to go from one booth to the other, just over how complex this well, is. Well, I definitely appreciated that because my dogs is tired. I had no problem getting all of my step goals in for this week. Oh yeah, but regardless of that, Berlin was beautiful, accommodating. Wow. We cannot wait to do it again. The people here were a lot of fun. The food was great. Absolutely looking forward to this in future iterations of IFA. The beer was great. The beer, the Hefeweizen. Some of the things we thought were really hot from the show floor. Actually, this was a great year for wearables. And so after the ASUS press conference, got a great first look at the ASUS Zen Watch 3. Definitely something we're gonna be interested in checking out in the future. ASUS's first circular watch face design. Yeah. And uh, you got to spend some time with the, uh, the Gear S3. The Samsung Gear, oh, this is interesting. So Samsung rented the Tempo Drone for this event. Obviously it's a circular design. Just Circles, to follow round. on the Gear S3, I found that to be probably the hottest product. Interesting that it's a wearable. <laughs> it's just, Samsung just really nailed it with this product. They forgot the whole geekiness. They started remembering that the average person actually wants a fashionable watch, and that's what I consider to be the best part of the Gear S3. Right, well, and also seeing Asus take some of those design cues, you know, the rose gold accents, the stainless steel body, really addressing the form, because we've got a lot of the function in place. You know, we've got a lot of the tech. Now, is this something you really want to wear on your body? Does it complement your style? And that, that conversation was echoed throughout a number of the other manufacturers putting out wearables this year. Indeed, indeed. And I was also surprised by Huawei. Yes, we got a pair of phones out of Huawei this year, the Nova and the Nova Plus. Um, again, adding to that competition in the sort of mid-range market, that $400 dollar slash euro price point is getting increasingly competitive. I just like the fact that that Nova looks like a mini Nexus 6P, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah, I, I, one, I, I feel, like I that, feel that they did a, it was smart for them to build on that. And actually the MediaPad M3. Looking like the same, you know, taking some of what we liked about the P9 and sort of curving it around, sort of softening the edges on yeah, that phone. I have to admit it. I mean, a, a year ago talking about Huawei was, we wouldn't. <laughs> But then Huawei launched the Nexus and the company just has continued to push the bar. Absolutely. Design well, and... And where we were sort of underestimating them as a manufacturer in North America, they've no. come out full force with a number, a range of products that I think are very exciting. They even about. taught us how to take a selfie. <laughs> now, obviously not everything is perfect. I think that uh, the Huawei segment was the perfect segue for the fact that uh, where were the flagships? Oh, yeah. Uh, think about it. Sony announced their new <laughs> XZ. Well, that, that was the one flagship we got. So we have the Xperia XZ and the Xperia X Compact. And I, I have to say, like, while it was fun and it was interesting playing with those devices on the floor, it was a very underwhelming response. I, I feel that Sony has lost a lot of mind share. A lot of lost uh, Like the, the company that we knew a decade ago, oh wow, Sony, we don't see that anymore. And it's actually the result of the company's products lately. I mean, the X performance underwhelmed everybody. Yeah. There was nothing, no performance there whatsoever. <laughs> but then again, I guess, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is this was the premium mid-ranger event Absolutely. that also covered a lot of wearables and a lot of fit this products very little everything else no flagships the only flagship that could have been announced at this event is currently having explosion problems we'll probably cover that in future videos very soon yeah. but what about you what did you think well I, I thought we got a good response on the axon 7 mini again sort of adding to that discussion on yeah. mid-rangers but Absolutely, nailing that topic, internet of things, the way that we connect all of our devices to our various smart 
hubs and communication outlets. Now, we actually have, we, we have to appeal to you guys out there in the community, out there in the audience, because we have something of a quandary. You know, when we're walking the show floor and we're seeing some of these amazing innovations with smart refrigerators, smart microwaves, smart toasters, smart washer and dryers, yeah. uh, how we are supposed to broach that subject with you guys out there in the community, because obviously our beat is something uh, usually a little bit more stuff that can fit in your pocket, less exactly. appliances we're, we're, and washing machines. We're not refrigerator now. or. <laughs> but we've seen amazing progress in connecting those devices to hubs, to Wi-Fi, to computers, and to smartphones and, and tablets. So really, we'd be curious to hear from you all how should we go about covering some of this stuff when we have access to it uh, so that we're also not inundating you with uh, a number of appliances? No, and and I, I guess the reason why that is so important as a question is because IFA is mainly that. This is a trade show for appliances. <laughs> it's huge, but it's full of TVs, refrigerators. I've, I've never seen so many blenders. Yeah, smart blenders. Smart blenders, and companies are using this trade show to showcase the future of their connectivity. Obviously, it's going to take some time. You're probably, some of you will probably only buy a smart blender, but in the case of us, I don't think I'm going to replace mine. You, I don't no, know. I'm good for right now. I've got, a, I've got a ninja. Now, obviously, aside from the hot stuff, the challenges, there were things that really surprised us, and that's that's a tall order for us geeks. Yeah, well, I mean, every time I walk a show floor, I want to walk away with something that I wasn't expecting that blew me away, that knocked my socks off. It blew you away because you hadn't seen it. The yoga book from Lenovo <laughs> was a product that, I don't know if you see our outro from MWC, that is the product that we saw yeah, back that then bad. that was still a prototype that we could not talk about. It was announced at this event. It was everything that we expected it to be. I love the fact that there's an option for Windows, but what did you think? You had the, ha the hands-on opportunity. Oh yeah, getting to spend some time with it, it's, it's such a fascinating example of what we can do to come up with creative solutions to some of the challenges inherent in mobile gear. So first of all, it just looks like it came out of the movie Tron. You know, like he's typing <laughs> on that I glass service. That. It's so cool. So that, that effect that. works really well. And then also sort of bringing back, we're looping around to finding some of those great analog interfaces. So when you, you set a piece of paper down on it and you're drawing on that piece of paper, and you have real pen and ink, and then that's translated in a really great way, in a digital way, it's to your awesome. screen. That works really, really well. But my biggest surprise was the price tag. Yeah, and that we're coming in at reasonable price for a bleeding edge interactive surface. A completely unique with. product. Yeah, totally. I think the price tag was the most killer part of it. I cannot wait to review it. Yeah, but, I'm looking forward to that one. But then that was your surprise. My surprise, <laughs> so uh, this is called this ignorance or whatever. So I had no clue that the Fossil Group, for example, was a group. Yeah. Was a group. I've been a Fossil user, a wearer, for 10 years. I love their watches. And then I walk in and I learn that, obviously, they acquired Misfit. That's right. Um, but So they have Misfit in their portfolio, but then Fossil is also an ODM. So they came up with their lineup of Q Founder watches. Now we've got the Q Wander, Wander and the Marshall. But because they're an ODM to companies like Michael Kors, to companies like Scoggin, for you got example. got style going on. So now you can get a Michael Kors Android Wear smartwatch because Fossil has created that platform. I think this is awesome. I mean, we've yeah. wanted Android Wear to take off for the longest to time. To really start growing, right. And I think this is the smartest way to compete. Everybody knows Michael Kors. Everybody knows a lot of these companies. Like like you, in your, in your case, for I'm example. A, yeah, I'm a huge Scoggin fan. So, so I know you were going on, like, really checking out the Michael Kors. I used to own an old Scoggin watch. And so to, to then see what they were doing doing with uh, connectivity, uh, with fitness tracking, with notifications on a very simple watch face. But then in a hybrid way, you know, exactly. it's not Android Wear, it's something unique to Fossil. It, it reminds us of the Cogito, uh, but in a much better implementation. A much more stylish implementation. It, a, a lot more private implementation. I yeah. feel that that was smart in the case oh, of Scoggin. Really clean. And then also, you know, just the practicality of having a connected device that's giving you notifications and alerts that you don't have to charge but for six once months. every six months. And then to see that and to flip it and, and know that there's increasing competition for that kind, that style of watch, we got to spend some time with uh, Withings. You know, so post Nokia acquisition, Ooh. they also are coming up with their own solutions for, I think their watch lasts for 25 days on a single battery. And it's a very similar implementation, very clean, efficient watch face and a very simple style for delivering you pertinent information while tracking heart rate and your sleep cycle and an active heart rate monitor built into it. I mean, this is exactly the kind of progress we wanted to see. Again, we don't want all of our tech to just advertise geek all the time. Exactly. Sometimes we need a little geek chic so that we can blend <laughs> in a bit better. But then, anyways, 
this is our surprise. Tell us about you in the comments down below. What surprised you about uh, IFA 2016? We already told you what we thought. This was a great show. Such yeah. a pleasure to cover it with this you. It's a lot Juan. of fun, man. We got to do this again. I know. Maybe, um, maybe something in like uh, Barcelona. I'd love that. See you there. Instead of paying horrible roaming fees when traveling abroad or the hassle of buying another SIM, why not try a smarter solution? XCOM Global gives you unlimited internet connectivity through a Wi-Fi hotspot rental for just $7.77 a day. Follow the link in the description and simply order your device before you depart. XCOM Global ships and then includes a return envelope along with the fees. Use promo code POCKET now for $10 off your first XCOM Global order. So folks, that's gonna wrap it up for our IFA 2016 coverage here in Berlin. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for our full shelf floor coverage and all of the reviews that are gonna be coming from these products that we got our first look at here at the show. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram as some gadget guy. I'm Jaime Rivera. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. And we will catch you all on the next video. On the next video. That sounds good.